guys, welcome back. Um, right, so if you watched my last video, you would have seen that I did a quick update on all the tanks and went through my plans for this room. Um, as you can see, we started we started with the room. Um, we're nearly finished. I've got a few more floorboards and bits to finish all down here, the insulation and whatever else. Um, but it's going really well. Um, whilst I'm waiting to get this finished, um, I'm going to spend some time tonight breaking down the old sun tank, which I showed you a couple of videos back had a big crack in it so we're going to go through and replace that today um, we're going to go out and do that in a minute <clears throat> and that's going to be section one of this series i think the way the best way for me to do this is to break it down into videos i don't want to do it all in one big long video um, so we're going to break it down this one we're going to section one we're going to strip the sump down rebuild that um, section two we're going to get the display tank which is a second hand tank needs a bit of tlc uh, we're going to revamp that Section three, we'll do the tank stand uh, and everything else. Uh, and we'll move on from there. Probably we end up being about eight sections, but this is where it's going to go in this room here. Uh, you can see we made a start on that. Let's jump out the back. I'm going to do this uh, tank rebuild in the garden simply because it's quite a nice evening out there uh, and it's, there's a lot more space and not as much mess out there. So let's jump out there and crack on. Okay, guys, so I'm all set up out here now. Um, we're going to strip this down completely. Um, for that I've just got a simple standing knife set up here. Uh, I'm going to cut out all these seals. Um, in this end of the tank there you'll see there's a nice big crack. So we're going to strip that down uh, and then using this tile cutter here we're going to cut a foot off of the glass to make this a three foot tank rather than a four foot tank. Uh, and then we, uh, we're going to put it back together. So we'll start by getting it stripped down. Okay guys, so this didn't go quite to plan. Um, I pulled a little bit too hard on the tank. I don't think I cut enough silicon out. Probably should have been a little bit more patient with it, but basically I've ended up cracking one pane of glass, um, which is not great. Um, that means that this, I mean, thankfully I got this tank for free, so I'm not, I'm not crying about it, you know. Um, um, but basically, uh, I think now that what we're gonna do is I'm gonna continue stripping this down because we've still got some nice bits of glass, the rest of it's okay. Um, and I'm gonna use this then, I think, for the baffles in the sump, and I'll try and sort, I'll source another another sump tank, maybe get a free foot that's not already got a crack in it. I mean, the t like I say, the tank was, you can see there, that's, that was the crack that was in it when we first started, so it's not like it's a good tank and I've broken it, it was, it was an already broken tank. Unfortunately, I've broken it, so it's not gone quite to pan, but like I say, we'll use these for the baffles. I'll source another uh, three foot sump tank somewhere uh, and we'll still go ahead. So I'm gonna carry on stripping this down uh, and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so after last night's uh, disaster where I broke the um, I broke the sump tank by stripping it down to repair, um, I moved on. Uh, we, we've now cleaned down the, the main display tank, the 300 litre there. Uh, you can see I've stripped the uh, stripped the white paint off the back of it and um, uh, started cleaning that down. I've had it filled with the full of water overnight, overnight last night, uh, so I know it's all tight. It's all uh, it's all good as it is at the moment. Uh, now using using parts of the broken glass that I've got um, from the other tank, I'm going to use that to build the weir in here to start with. So that's what we're about to do next. Uh, you can see I've got the tile cutter set up over there. Uh, so I'm going to set the camera up uh, and show you how to how to cut a piece of glass for your weir. It's cutting glass and drilling tanks is one of the things that a lot of people try and stay away from. It scares them a little bit. But to be honest, it's not, it's not that it's not that difficult. Um, certainly drilling a tank is, is one of the easiest things I've ever done. Um, and as long as you're gentle with cutting the glass, um, then that's, that's just as easy as well. Um, I mean, you've seen what happens when, you're, when you get a bit too heavy handed. Um, but as long as you take your time and you're gentle with it, um, there's many ways of cutting glass um, to uh, to suit. Um, but I'm using a, uh, a tile cutter. Um, 
simply uh, score and snap. Um, some people use a diamond wheel. Uh, other people will use a um, uh, like a, a score and a ruler. Um, but for me, this is just the, the way I find it easiest to do. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this up, uh, and it's going to be a simple score and cut. Okay guys, so there it is, it really is that easy. Um, that's the first piece of my weird cut. It's uh, 260 by 220 wide, I think. Um, sorry, 360 by 220 wide. Um, that's what we're gonna use for that. I'm just gonna use exactly the same method um, of glass cutting for everything else uh, in this series. So when we make the baffles for the sump, um, obviously this weir, that's all gonna be used six mil glass on a tile cutter. Simple as that, it's really not as difficult as, as people think. Um, if you can get your hands on, on some 6mm glass for a reasonable price, um, it really does make things a lot easier cutting to size yourself um, to, to suit your needs rather than having to go to a glazier's with your measurements, get it cut and then wait for a while. Uh, with these edges on here, obviously they're, they're now sharp edges, I'm literally just going to get a piece of uh, wet and dry paper uh, and just rub the edges back with the wet and dry just to take the edge off. Um, again, no special tools or anything like that, just a simple piece of wet and dry paper. Once I finish cutting all these, we'll move on to silicon in the weir together and drilling tanks. Cool. Okay guys, so uh, we've cut the glass for the weir. Next thing to do is drill the tank. To do this, I've got uh, a few sets of basic tools. I've got two diamond tipped hole saws for cutting glass, tile and stone. Uh, 150mm uh, and 140mm. The 50mm are for the, uh, the returns to the sump and the 40mm is for the feedback into the tank from the return pump. And then I've got a tape measure and a pencil. I've got my garden hose, I'm doing this outside because of the water. I've got the garden hose which I've already clamped up here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is mark out my um, where I need my holes to go on the bottom of the sump. Now I've measured my tank, my 900 um, and there they are 80 mil apart, so I know my measurements. So I'm going to mark these out on here from the edge of the tank. So I'm going to do this in pencil. Um, so you know we need to be 80 mil apart and I'm going to go 60 mil from the back of the tank. This is to allow enough space um, between each um, bulkhead fitting that's, um, that's gonna go on the, uh, on the base of the tank. So they're very roughly marked out. I would guess you probably can't see them from the camera. Um, so that's, that's where they're at. I'm gonna start with, uh, start with cutting my first one. I've got my 18 volt drill here. Um, unfortunately, I've lost the chuck key to this uh, angle drill. 
so I, um, I can't actually remove the 50 mil piece from here uh, so it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult for me but um, ordinarily obviously you wouldn't have that on there um, the 40 mil bit doesn't have anything on so when we cut that you'll see how that goes um, so I'm gonna go turn the water onto the hose and come back and we're gonna cut three holes in the base of this tank and you'll see it's really not that difficult Okay, so my water is positioned directly over the top of the hole I'm cutting, so it's going to keep the tip of this drill really cold. Um, I'm going to start off really slow until I get a good groove in the glass to make sure that the hole cutter doesn't go spinning off. If you just put the, the hole cutter on flat like that, it's just going to spin all over the glass. So it's good to start at an angle until you get a good groove and then tip in from there. Again, the key to this, as with anything with the cutting glass and drilling glass, is just to keep it really steady and slow. So I'm halfway through now, uh, I'll just stop because I just realised I hadn't put anything in the base of the tank. Um, I've now just put a, a pillow in the base of the tank there because when I break through the other side of the glass, the, uh, the bit I've just cut out is going to fall inside. Some people use tape to secure it on the back. Um, because I've got the tank up outside, I'll just put a pillow in there that's just going to catch the glass and stop it from potentially cracking the bottom pane as it falls through. Okay guys, so uh, that's it, it's the first hole drilled. 
you'd see it took me quite a while to get through it's just a case of going gently and slowly and not rushing the job and it really is is that easy you've just seen me do it there um, there's no problems i'm going to go ahead and cut the next two um, and then we're going to move this and all the glass inside and i'm going to assemble it inside where it's dry um, so that the outdoor air doesn't um, affect the silicon in any way uh, so i'll get these two cut i'll move everything inside and uh, we'll pick it up there Okay guys, so the uh, tank's sorted out the back there. I'm now gonna crack on and start building the sand stand here. Uh, I'm not gonna give you a play-by-play -play because if you wanna watch the stand, there's a hundred better videos out there um, for me. So we're gonna do this on a time-lapse and then once it's all done, I'll go through how I built it um, and point out a few key bits of the construction and keep it short and to the point so you get what you need out of it and uh, you're also not sitting there bored for an hour whilst to build a stand. So cue the time-lapse. majority of the frame is now in. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm using these thicker timbers here. Uh, these are three inches thick, uh, I think five or six inches uh, in width. Um, I'm cutting those down so they create a, uh, a full support for the top. So vertically the tank is completely supported. So there's no weight hanging on fixings or anything like that. It's all on, all the weight's being transferred to the floor. Uh, which underneath I know is good because we recently redone that. Um, I'm about to do the same on that side. Uh, and then once this is all done and set, I'm gonna put a ply top on, uh, make the holes in the top for the um, for the weir, for the pipe work to go into the sump. Uh, and then what we might do, I think I might leave it till the next video, um, but we will then look at putting the infrastructure in for the auto water change on the sump. So uh, I'll crack on. Uh, quick top tip, um, I've now braced out the top of the frame, I'm ready for the top to go on which is now cut. This here isn't, there's imperfections in this here, so you wouldn't want to screw your ply straight to this. Uh, you know, with the best will in the world, you try to get it perfect, right? But there's still a few bits there where it's not quite flat. So before I screw the ply on, I've got some of this Gorilla Glue. This is foaming glue, as you can see on the top there, where it's going to get out of the light. You can see the way it's foamed up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover every joist that I've been putting on the top here with this glue before I screw the top on. And then as this foams up underneath the top, once the top's, um, top's properly secured, it's going to fill up any little imperfections that are potentially still left underneath there. Meaning the ply, which is essentially taking the weight off the tank, is completely spread out evenly um, and that will allow for a really solid top. So let's crack on. Okay guys, so uh, right, I'm going to leave that there now. Uh, yeah, the stand is now built. Let's come over to the mess. Um, so as you can see, this is our stand for the, for the four foot, 300 litre show tank. And then below there is the space for the sump, uh, which I have now decided we're going to use this 125 for the sump. Um, down the bottom here, you can see there's a hole in the wall there. I just drilled that. That is the outlet for our wall, uh, auto water change system. That's where the overflow is going to go. Uh, and then down at this end here, uh, you can see the pipe work that's been put in now. Uh, that's the, the hot and cold pipe work there for, uh, for the, the inlet. That's going to go into a TMV, then into a plug. Um, 
but we'll go into that more in depth when we do the tank install and I'll go through how to build yourself uh, an automated water change. We'll go through the different stages of it uh, and how I make it into a smart water change, um, which essentially is just an Alexa plug, but like I say, we'll go into that. Um, you can see where I mentioned the glue earlier. Um, this is now starting to foam out. It's not dry yet, but you can see the way that's foaming out. And then likewise, if we look under here, you can see the way it's expanding and filling all of the gaps that were that were possibly left um, between the uh, between the supporting timber work and the t and the ply top. Um, so that's now completely completely safe. Um, when building stands like this, um, you don't always need to have bracing across the sides. Um, it's not a freestanding stand. The back of this is fixed to the wall. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, if this was a freestanding stand, obviously I would have. Uh, cross bracing on the sides and the back to stop the whole thing racking side to side uh, and front to back obviously the, in this scenario here the base is fixed to the floor the timbers are fixed to the wall and it's all fixed likewise um, front side to back it's not going anywhere um, so there we go right i'm going to leave this one here then um, let us know what you think um, if you've got any ideas on how it could have been improved or or if you think i've done something wrong let me know it's always uh, interesting to get your thoughts on uh, on how i do things um, Next video, we will we'll bring the tanks in and we'll start setting up the, the tank sump set up and the pipe work. So uh, if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe, uh, click the bell, um, get yourself those notifications for when that video comes out. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time.